Hi, you clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Sunday, the 19th of August. First off in the Atlantic, we have Gordon scooting away east-northeastward, actually more northeastward now, scraping the southern Azores and is now weakening probably down to a Cat 1 by now, and it will be weakening as it goes through the Azores. Bad storm for them, uh, but they are fairly used to storms like this in the winter and it shouldn't be a huge deal. Over here in the western Gulf, we have the remnants of Helene, no longer officially named Helene. The NHC has the official remnant center as of yesterday up here <clears throat> in northeastern Mexico, uh, but the center of the action is down a directly over Tampico, right on the coastline here, uh, where we said it would be hugging the coast, and is uh, going to be drifting north uh, on its merry little way over the next three or four days, and model support for this has dropped a bit over the last couple of days for any kind of redevelopment over the water, but I'm not going to tell you folks in Texas and northern Mexico to stop watching this yet, uh, because it's still possible that a little bit of a something could spin up out of this uh, over the water as this frontal boundary comes down over the Gulf, and we still may get a shot at this trying to spin up a little bit. But regardless, tropical-like rains are coming into Louisiana and Texas and northern Mexico as this uh, throws some moisture at this front, and a pulse may break off and move into Louisiana, and then something may get left behind and mill around in here. But in general, a tropical, rainy, a uh, period for these folks not really going to be a big deal even if it does develop probably won't have time before it moves inland to become anything significant so really uh, nothing to worry about down here <clears throat> but what we may have to worry about is invest 94l out here in the eastern atlantic and this is still working on becoming better organized. You can see the circulation with it. There's some counterclockwise flow and not a closed circulation yet as far as we can tell, but we haven't had a good ice gap pass in a while. Uh, but you see this dry air, the stratocumulus clouds wrapping in now from the western side as we showed you yesterday. This is going to be hampering the system as it comes westward. And uh, the models have backed off a bit on robustness of this system and how far it strengthens during the next few days. This is the GFS out day four, showing it in the northeastern Caribbean, not really that strong. The last time uh, we did a video, we had the GFS showing this at 980 millibars in this location. This is now up to a weak tropical storm on the model run, and the European has also backed off, now shows basically an open wave in the eastern Caribbean by day five. And uh, this is interesting given that we see the situation what I think this is is the model struggling because there's a very large envelope of low pressure in here and uh, I didn't mention this enough yesterday but this is a pretty pretty intense area of broad tropical low pressure pressures are lower than 1012 millibars in the entire circle I've drawn and we have a center out here that's been competing with this one up to the northeast and uh, there's pros and cons to the situation the cons for 94L are again the dry air coming in because of its latitude that will be hampering it like it has all the waves in the central Atlantic so far this season and the other con is that it is competing with this large envelope of low pressure and it will have a, a hard time consolidating as it comes westward and it will take its time trying to organize and could hamper it but the pros for this are that it does have latitude and is allowing it to try to develop its own circulation a singularity outside of the intertropical convergence zone that can try to develop instead of being embedded down here and not developing until the Caribbean. So that's a pro for it developing. Also, since it's on the eastern side of this area of low pressure, it has a large pool of moisture down here from the tropics and the monsoonal flow that it can draw from as it moves past 50 west and therefore will have a moisture source to compete and try to mix out the dry air from the north as it comes westward. So there's some supporting factors and some negative factors. Overall, I think these are all going to result in a very slow, gradual development, as I uh, said yesterday. And I think the models right now are just suffering from a bout of confusion because of large areas of low pressure like this, sprawling areas they have a hard time focusing on. And until this actually starts developing, I think they will struggle. But I do think it will develop eventually. The pattern is fairly favorable for that. And we're going to have to watch this in the northern Antilles Islands as time goes on here. Uh, this is the GFS Ensembles, uh, day 7, 500 millibar heights and anomalies. You can see again the trough coming into Western Europe over here over England, and uh, the storm's going to be somewhere over here by that time. And again, lots of uh, blocking over the North American Arctic. This is forcing the ridge to remain strong over the Central Atlantic, which is why 94L is coming west and not recurving right away. And you can see the weakness in the 
The weakness in the ridge is placed right over the eastern seaboard of the United States in this pattern. And then if we go out to day nine, watch what happens. Notice the trough backs westward here in the means. It doesn't actually back westward. The first trough went east, but in the means, the trough shows up farther west a few days later. And then notice the blocking that gets forced to develop over the Canadian Maritimes. And then here's the storm that's going to be somewhere in this region by that time. And the problem with this pattern is the pattern itself is a very classic pattern for giving the east coast of the US a storm coming from the central Atlantic. The question is whether there's actually a storm in position to take advantage of that pattern. But this pattern is very classic. If you have the weakness backing westward because of the pattern being retrogressive, the weakness backs towards the coast, you get blocking to the north. This is very classic for an east coast hurricane coming right up like this, similar to Irene of last year and all sorts of other examples that you could give. Um, the question is whether the storm is here to take advantage. If it's weak and comes too far south, it'll miss the weakness and become a problem farther west in other areas. If it gets really strong really fast, it'll take advantage of the weakness sooner and recurve between the East Coast and Bermuda being a non-issue. Uh, but, but in general, this is a fairly threatening pattern overall. And uh, my track remains largely unchanged from yesterday. Uh, the intensity, I still think it'll get named out ahead of the islands. Once it gets past 50 west, this should start to mix out the dry air and develop. And uh, only gradual strengthening, uh, getting stronger as it comes through uh, pretty close to the northern islands. Again, uh, the Puerto Rico and the northern Antilles should keep an eye on this. And uh, this will probably not become a hurricane by then. I'm doubting uh, that rate of intensification in my uh, intensity forecast remains the same from yesterday. And the long-term track, uh, due to the global model starting to recognize some of the issues that this is going to have due to the large envelope of low pressure in the dry air, um, has allowed me to nudge the cone ever slightly southwest in the long range, and uh, largely the same and an update of the forecast from yesterday. In general, uh, we're going to have what should be a strengthening storm in this area of the world in about a week's time, and this is something that the Caribbean islands, even the Greater Antilles here, and uh, the southeast United States, the eastern seaboard in general, and Bermuda should still keep an eye on uh, in the long range. This is going to be a big story if it does indeed develop and uh, we shall see what happens. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.